so surprising for so many reasons. Max, what was your takeaway, though, from game one? Well, the Spurs had a better shot than I thought. Mm -hmm. Kawhi was the best player on the court. I mean, Kawhi was clearly the best player on the court. And by the way, and that was not even Kawhi at 100%, because, again, he re-aggravated the injury and still played at a level of effectiveness, Stephen A., where I think it is clear. Obviously, the best player in the world is LeBron James, clearly. Kawhi Leonard is the second best player in the world. His effect on the outcome of a game is profound. Both ends of the floor. Just an incredible, incredible player. And it is a shame that he really, listen, you ain't going to get Kawhi even if he somehow makes it on the court uh, till at least game three. And then the question is, do you even play him in game two because you can give him a week off? But there's that. And there's the fact that the Spurs really don't have another guy to go to. In the first half, LaMarcus Aldridge was a mismatch with everyone on the floor. First half, because Kawhi's on the floor, and there's less pressure, and they had a huge lead. He's a mismatch with everyone. This dude's too skinny. This dude's too short. This guy can't get it done. And in the second half, those same guys, I don't hear about double coverage. There was plenty of, you know, one-on-one -on -one play. He, somehow, all those mismatches weren't mismatches anymore. What happened? Other than the lead was shrinking and the pressure was mounting. So Kawhi's the best player other than LeBron James in the NBA. Mm -hmm. The Spurs had a shot. I still think the Warriors would have won. That shot's gone. And boy, do they need a second banana on that team. What was the question? What was your takeaway? LaMarcus Aldridge. <laughs> That's the takeaway. It's very, very simple to me. I know Steph Curry was absolutely explosive in the second half, particularly in the third quarter. Durant came on, scored 10 straight in the fourth quarter. We get all of that. Kawhi Leonard goes down. You've got a 23-point lead. Popovich has Mono Ginobili, who was sensational mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. You've got Jajante Murray, who I love. I love this kid. I love the potential. He's going to be he good has. in a couple years. Simmons got to work on his ball handling skills, but he's got a tremendous upside. He's athletic. He defends, etc. Kyle Anderson is steady. LaMarcus Aldridge is the dude that is the successor to Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, the greatest power forward ever in the history of basketball. This, this is Tim Duncan we're talking about here. This is the successor that they got from Portland. I don't give a damn about his 28 points. I don't even give a damn about his 11 points in the second half, even though it was just on 4 for 13 shooting. What I care about most is how fidgety, unsteady, nervous, panicky LaMarcus Aldridge looked. I mean, a couple of times the ball went in the basket by accident. You understand? Know he bobbling it, and it goes up, and it, it goes in. Shooting you know, fadeaways I mean, against little guys. Fadeaway yeah. little guys on him. No man in him. I'm mm -hmm. talking about a man, give me the ball, drop step, handle your business. You got three or four inches on dudes defending you. You can't attack anybody doing, trying to do scoops up and under shot. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. He looked petrified the second that Kawhi Leonard went out of this game. And that is what took, I took away from it because I kept saying all along, this is Kawhi and LaMarcus Aldridge's team. That's supposed, that's what it was supposed to be. Last year, the dude averaged nearly 40 in the first two games against Oklahoma City and then disappeared so badly that Popovich said, even when Tim Duncan clearly had fallen off a cliff, to use your analogy, and his career was over, and we all recognize that, Popovich had Tim Duncan in that game six balling in Oklahoma City because he showed up like the Hall of Fame veteran that he was because LaMarcus Aldridge wasn't getting it done, relatively pedestrian. Yesterday, Perfect example. That was, listen, those guards that came on that car, I want to make sure everybody understands here. Jonathan Simmons Jay had a couple of mishaps, but for the most part, he played solid. Murray played solid. These young guys came in there and they did their job because Popovich, even when the, 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 the Jonte Murray scored on a couple of baskets, Max, Popovich decided to call Mark, LaMarcus Aldridge's number and he kept calling it. And he kept disappointing. And that was the right move, by and the kept, way. And it was the right move, but he kept disappointing. He looked panicky. Okay, what? Now, look, and that's my problem. Now, look, in the first half, when he had the mismatches, he was exploiting them. In this, as I said, as the lead shrank, as he didn't have the safety net of mm -hmm. Kawhi Leonard anymore, right. those say, and people, well, because now he's getting more defensive attention. Well, you're a max contract player. I mean, the only thing I can come up with is he got tight under what, pressure. What did I say? I'm glad we agreed. Didn't I say, didn't I say that just a couple minutes ago? That's exactly what I said. He got palms got sweaty, backsides get tight. This dude, I mean, this dude looked 
petrified. And I'm telling you that right now. That is a problem, man. And what makes it worse is that, guess what? Golden State were like piranhas in the second half. They were all over these dudes. But these dudes still tried to get steady, and they gave LaMarcus Aldridge the ball in the post where he's supposed to have it. Five, seven feet away from the basket. He getting pushed further away, shooting fall away jump shots. I'm like, what? the hell are you doing? Well, if they get to was, a game was, six. That's what I'm saying. If they get to a game six at San Antonio and Aldridge balls out, he might smack you on the butt on the way through hey, the tunnel, Stephen hey, A. Hey, hey, let oh. me tell you something right now. That damn thing hurt. <laughs> it, <laughs> it looks hurt. like it hurt. It, 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 can it, tell by he, he is sick. Markeith Morris is like 6'9", 250, Yeah, he put a little something on that, yeah, too. That was saying. hilarious. And but then, you yeah, had to be in such a good mood because you wanted them to. No, no, no. Listen, I wanted them to win, number one. Number two, I called him out about how he was getting to give it to him against Paul Millsap in the first round. And then I told him he was inconsistent in this series. He better step up. I respect the man came up and screamed on me like, yo, don't give up on us. Stay with us, Stephen A. And slap me in the backside. It's just that damn. Your He's 260. So He's 260. Priceless. See, guys, like you bring Such up guys like. Now. It is. You know you bring what I mean? And he just admitted he kind of liked it. You bring up guys like oh, Jonathan stop. Simmons. Leave him alone. You bring up guys like Jonathan Simmons. Jonathan I didn't mind. I deserved it. I deserved it. I deserved <laughs> it. I deserved well, it. But let's not right. start a narrative that you liked it. Yeah, so but, let's uh, that's that. what I'm saying. I'm that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Jonathan Simmons. Simmons is a guy who paid 150 bucks to try out with the Spurs. This dude is like Rocky Balboa. He's like an underdog story who's now making good. He's not a max contract player. And by the way, you could say, well, he had a mishap or two. He shows up. That guy shows up. He has heart. He plays with heart. It's obvious. And what people are saying about LaMarcus Aldridge, and you never want to say this about a player because you don't know everything that's going on in their lives with them physically, emotionally, anything else. But when you're a max contract player, and you got a 25-point lead, and you're good enough to drop 35 and 40 points, even when it was with Portland, and there was an issue here, Damian Lillard, need to have some monster playoff games, and you go away in the second half, and everyone notices the same thing. It's not like one or two people notice, well, he seems to be shrinking from the moment. Everyone notices it. And there are some who will defend and talk about double teams and extra defensive attention. We're that talking about, happened. that's not what I saw. I saw a guy in the same matchups as he had in the first half, but now that the clock is ticking down and the lead is shrinking and your best player is in on the floor, suddenly you don't want to take those shots. I, I saw a guy that as Golden State amped up its pressure, feeling the momentum shift because Steph Curry had gotten hot and they were climbing back, particularly when Kawhi Leonard went down. I saw a guy that saw Greg Popovich said, this is your time, and he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to handle it. And the, the point is, is that if, if, if Golden State is throwing a myriad of things in your direction, I understand it. There, most of the time, he was in one-on-one -on -one coverage and couldn't do anything. Maybe he's completely I mean, in his head now. I mean, you're bobbling rebounds. That's what I mean. was, uh, you know, was, head. You're not going to have the real Kawhi Leonard for game two regardless, That's even right. if he could somehow get on the court. So, boy, do they I need him so to show up. For him. And you look at the effect that Kawhi had on that game like the pace they were playing at, just the number of possessions, that was the exact game the Spurs wanted with Kawhi on the floor. And it made you think, look, I still like the Warriors in that series, but as I'm watching that, I, I was thinking, well, it certainly ain't going to be a sweep. And maybe this goes to six or maybe even seven because they just went on the road and stole, not stole game one, they were beating them down in game one. They were going to get out of Golden State with at least a split. I know the Warriors were off for a while. Maybe they're a little rusty. Maybe there are other issues. No Steve Kerr and all that. But you get out of Golden State with minimum a split, that series is at least going six games, you got to figure. And now it looks like this series is going to be over quickly. I don't have a dog in the fight, but I felt terrible for the Spurs and Kawhi Leonard yesterday. They should have won that game. I agree. We got a tweet here from uh, Montel Jordan, if we could pop that up. This is how we view it. Pretty good. Close enough, my man, saying it to you, Stephen A. Yes. Obviously a little play on words there with this song. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. We appreciate him watching. When we come back, game seven tonight from Boston. Will the Wizards break the streak of home dominance between these two teams? Find out next coming up. And Derek Jeter reunites with some of his former teammates during a ceremony Jeter. at the Jeets at Yankee Stadium yesterday. But someone decided